Hello and welcome back to the program structure track of Pangkarniyon Developer. So dito na umpisa na yung mga pag-explain ng each part ng ating mga programs, ng ating program structure. So let's start off with yung pinabasic, yung literals, identifiers, and keywords. Itong didiscuss natin, ito yung mga tokens. Minention na na ito before, yung tokens, ito yung mga laman ng ating programs or strings, yung mga words dun sa ating programs, and not just words, pati rin mga symbols, na pwedeng i-categorize to something. So, ito yung just some of the possible types ng tokens natin, possible categories ng tokens natin, yung literals, operators, keywords, and identifiers. Yung operators, that would be another lesson. Ito namang tatlo na to, they're simple enough to fit into very short lesson. So, let's start off with literals. Literals are yung tokens na nagre-represent ng values. Since dito kayo sa program structure track, I assume na nanggaling na kayo sa data representation track, kaya hindi ko na kailangan i-discuss ko ano yung mga itong i-explain ko in the next few minutes. So, itong literals, this is how we represent yung data as tokens or ito yung ginagamit natin para represent ng data dun sa loob na ating programs. So, start off tayo with yung numbers natin. Yung integer, they're just numbers. In our programs, if we put yung numbers natin, they're as is. So, for example, 1, 2, 3, 123 yan. Yung itong 6, 3, 7, 4, 5, 3, 2, that's 6,374,532. Yung integer literals rin natin also allow for negative numbers, so lagyan nyo lang yan ng minus symbol. That's the dash. Yan yung negative. Obviously, that would be negative 90. And since hindi na pwede gamitin comma, kasi comma has special use, we shall see that later. Ang ginagamit natin pang delimit or pang separate natin dun sa ating thousands is tong underscore. Pwede rin wala. Walang underscore gaya nung 6,374,532 natin. But if you really need to represent yung mahabang number natin, you could use yung underscore. However, later, we shall see yung mga ganong classing numbers. There are alternatives aside from using integer literals. Anyway, move on na tayo dun sa other type ng number natin, which is yung floating point numbers. Essentially, yung numbers na may decimal point somewhere in them. So, they're just like our integer literals. Ang difference is, yun niya, may decimal point siya. Kasi kung wala siyang decimal point, we assume that they are integers. So, wala namang ganong malaking difference rito. May decimal point lang sila. And, you know na, floating point number na sila. Anyway, next, yung boolean natin, they're just two possible values. It's either true or false. Later in this lesson, didiscuss ulit na itong true or false na to kung ano sila. They're not just literals. But at this stands, yung true, that stands for a boolean na true. False stands for boolean na false. Anyway, next, character literals, they're just a single character. So it's letter, number, punctuation mark, enclosed by either a single or double quotation marks. So, dito you have capital letter A, you have 0, and you have the exclamation point. So, to follow up dun sa ating character literal natin, let's move on dun sa reference data type na version niya, which is yung string. String is, syempre, made up of multiple characters. So, it's just the same, enclosed by single or double quotation marks. Ang um, difference lang is, it's not limited to a single character. So, pwede zero, pwede marami. Yung kung isa lang, mag-isa, we consider that as a character lang. Pero kadalasan naman dito sa mga wala na programs natin, halos walang use yung character data type. We could assume yung character is a string. Anyway, move on na tayo dun sa other reference data types. So, yung next is an array. Array is just a series of literals comma separated so dito na nagagamit yung comma kaya hindi na magamit yung comma dun sa ating integer na data type and enclosed by square braces square brackets so dito sa mga examples na to 
First, we have an array ng strings or array of characters. Pero lang naman dapat yun. Uh, separated by comma and enclosed in square braces. Square brackets. So, so yan, we have ABC, then we have 789, and dito sa ating wala programming language, pwedeng different types yung laman ng array natin. And it depends. Later, madidiscuss na yan paano tayo nagdi-declare ng variables. But that's another lesson dito sa program structure track. And we move on na tayo from array. There's also another literal dito sa ating uh, wala programming language na nagre-refer din sa array. Ito yung tinatawag na range. Yung range is a uh, special literal na pang shortcut ng ating mga array na data. For instance, gusto mong gawa ng isang list, isang array ng A, B, C. We could just say yung start na A up to yung end niya na C. So dito, sa first example, we have yung dalawang dots. That means... Yung range na yun, yung array na mapoproduce nun, is inclusive. So, kasama yung C. As opposed dun sa tatlong dots, dun sa susunod na range, exclusive. So, 7 up to 10, pero hindi kasama yung 10. Yun yung dating nun. So, yun, 7, 8, 9 lang siya. Kasi tatlong dots, exclusive kasi. Yung range, madalasan may gamit yung number form. I don't think we're going to use yung letter form. Pero yung number form, maganda yan pag later, pag nag iterate na tayo over certain values. So, yun lang naman madalas na mga gamit yung range na literal na to. It's just a shortcut para pag nag-gagamit tayo ng data na sunod-sunod talaga. Anyway, let's move on dun sa ating last na basic na reference data type. So, yung literal natin for record, it's enclosed in curly braces. Kanina array is square braces. Dito naman curly braces, curly brackets. And yung field value pair niya is defined as that. So, field name. So, ito si Juan de la Cruz. Ito yung dun sa ating record example. Yung field name, then colon, followed by the value. So, is married. True, full name, colon, then yung ating string na Juan de la Cruz, then age, colon, then yung number. That's how we represent yung ating uh, records. They're enclosed by curly braces, curly brackets. And yung last natin, this is a special data type, reference data type, is yung null natin. So, it's a null reference. Kung hindi nyo pa yan alam, kasi hindi yan yun dun sa part ng basic natin na data representation struct. There's a link there. So, yung null natin, normally in programming languages, you would declare that as either null or nil. Pero para sa atin, we're going to use a symbol. Kasi nga, sabi nga natin, yung wala programming language, it's much more suited for writing in paper. For writing on paper. Kaya yun, mas madaling isulat yung capital lambda na Greek. So, parang triangle lang siya na walang base. So, yun lang yung gagamitin natin for null. Anyway, so that's that for our literals. At this point, kung tinignan nyo ulit yung mga samples natin, may kita nyo kung ano yung mga parts dun na nagre-refer to literals. And obviously, hindi sila ganun kahirap kasi they just mean what they are. So, numbers, they mean what they are. Wala naman sila pinagbago sa what you would think they should be represented in a programming language. Let's proceed. Yung keywords and identifiers, napakasimple lang yan. Keywords, also known as reserved words. Sa languages, ito yung mga words na may special meaning in our language. Yan lang yan. So, ito yung list ng keywords natin. At this point, hindi ko pa naiisip kung ano yung lahat ng possible cases for our wala programming language. Pero yun, ito yung mga keywords natin, mga reserved words sa language natin. Each of them has a specific use and each of them has a specific purpose and i-discuss na lang yun dun sa lesson nila. 
And yun lang yun. May specific use sila, may specific function sila. Dun sa ating mga programs, kadalasan they're in boldface for your convenience. Para hindi kayo malito dun sa ating next na type, sa next na token, which is yung identifiers. So, identifiers, ito yung ginagayit natin pang name ng data, pang name ng functions, pang name ng mga entities dun sa ating program. Ang rason bakit natin diniscuss yung keywords bago ang identifier is yung mga identifiers natin sa programs natin, they're made up of characters. So, alphanumeric characters, plus underscore, plus question mark, and exclamation point. At hindi sila dapat magkapareho sa isang existing na keyword. So, may kita nyo rito, basically lahat ng words na may kita mo dun sa ating programs, they're all identifiers. Except yung ating mga reserved words, yung ating mga keywords. So, kaya nga diniskasan yung keywords natin kasi they have a separate use. Everything else, they're identifiers. So, just a couple of examples. Itong unang dalawa, that's from our square root. So, we have our guess that was used to represent data. Yung not good enough, that was representing functions. And itong last is, mawari, gravity constant, hindi na niya nagamit, pero later na lang na niya i-discuss sa lesson niya, yung constants, ano yung use niya. Pero yun, may kita nyo rito, you could use letters, you could use... You could use question mark, underscore, wala lang rito ang example na may number. Pero, madali lang yun eh. Lagay, lagay ka lang ng number. Kung mara, number one, or first, or whatever. Sa so, any any word na hindi keyword, that's an identifier. So, yun lang naman yung ating basic tokens. Yung next lesson, kung gusto nyo gawin linear itong... Uh, approach nyo sa pag-aaral ng program structure track, hindi nyo susundan yung mga links na nag-pop up, yung next session natin is yung operators. It's another token, pero it's a bit more complicated. Marami tayong pag-uusapan dyan, hindi na yan magkakasya rito sa lesson na to.